Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. So I just wanted to update some information with you guys about my life and just just tell you guys how I'm I'm not I support the LGBTIA community, but I don't take part in all the LGBTIA plus communities viewpoints. I have my own mindset of viewpoints, so I address those viewpoints only. Of course, I do recognize myself as a legal coach and I support their topics. However, not all their topics I want to support just because as an adult woman, there are some viewpoints that are not 100% grounded as a 100% understanding of viewpoints. Like, yes, you could date whoever you want to date. Yes, you can be attracted to whoever you want to be attracted to, man, man, woman, woman, whatever. You know, it's up to you. I don't, that doesn't bother me. What bothers me is the stigmatization that all people are all in one umbrella term of alignment. Because now it's like, no, what shoe fit, that shoe that fits you does not always apply to me. So it's not like our shoes, shoe, our, both our shoes fit on each other's feet. So when we hear about those two shoes that don't fit on each other, and when I walk out every day outside, People try to distress me as trans because I'm a female that likes to act masculine. So that means aren't you? So that means you're trans, right? No. What it means is I'm a female that likes to honor myself in both of my feminine ways and masculine ways. You know, but I'm intersex. I was born intersex, meaning I wasn't. I'm not trans. I'm not debating on which gender I am. It's just me being myself and being my own truth. It's not no more stigmatization on that view. It's just me being me and me just being myself. So, yeah. And because of that, and because people don't understand that viewpoint that I don't I, I don't walk in the same shoe path as how you want to, like, celebrate on those types of uh, viewpoints of, like, oh, yeah, like, yeah, sexuality, I'm a sex coach. I'm a sex therapist also, so I speak about sex therapy. But I don't speak on, like, the viewpoints where how... If you're a plus sign of HIV, that you are 100% secure enough to have sex with somebody else, even if you had the prep and everything else. I don't advocate on those viewpoints because that's not, that's more health related issues that I feel as a government, my society viewpoints of where I stand in that. I feel like that's not in any type of agreement that I would was say as 100% necessary as factable evidence that that would be truth. Yeah, there probably is evidence. I'm not looking for the evidence. My, my opinion based on that viewpoint is discarded. I don't care. That mindset is off. I'm not open-minded on those agendas, viewpoints where they say if you take PrEP, you're 100% certain from HIV. And then people go about having sex with a lot of different people for the viewpoints that, oh yeah, if I take this medicine, I am 100% guaranteed. Because that's not always the case with medication. There is side effects that with medications also. You know, there's a lot of different side effects with medications too. You know, so, you know, so it's not all medication is 100% guaranteed that if you have sex with so-and-so, you are a fine person because you're a hundred percent certain that if you weren't wearing a barrier because you know i noticed that in a like you know i'm not judgmental in the lgbt community but i'm just saying the truth like because from other people that i met like you know with condom use like they don't feel as needed as some feel but some when of youthful and not as younger and viewpoint as adulthood feel like condoms are also needed in the protection of having sex so i don't educate on those type of terms on those levels where i have to be a spokesperson on the whole viewpoint because i'm an intersex woman but i don't recognize myself in the lgbtia setting where i have to deal with those types of pressments like yes as an advocator i support everything i support everything as a respect towards the community because the community is a good community. I mean, they have good motives in life. They have their own way of living their life and way they want to live their truth. And that's an acceptance for me to know. But where it's like trans women are now fighting cisgender women, 
and saying is this this is a legal type of setting like that's where it draws the line because now it's like no you can't if you're trying to say that you're kind of competing with a biological birth woman that's where the discrimination goes because this woman was born like this and then this woman transitioned to this there's a difference in that agenda, so I'm not going to go all into that. So obviously, I don't support those types of motives where it's like, this is the right way and this is the wrong way. Openness to sectionality is the best possible chance that people will find a general happiness of self. Because that's what I do as a life coach, and that's what I do as a sex therapist, and that's what I do as a counselor and as a life coach. I speak forth on those knowledge. So I am not in the LGBTIA community. I was never really liked it anyway because I never shared the same agenda moments of what LGBTIA would look like. Cause you know, in the trans community, cause you remember I used to tell people I used to act like a tomboy. I just gave my, I shaved my hair short and I just started acting like a more of a tomboy since. I'm sorry that it, my sound is kind of breaking up. I'm kind of thinking while I'm talking to you guys. And yeah, so. Yeah, but I don't think in the umbrella terms that everything I have to disclose for someone's bias of, oh, well, aren't you in the LGBTIA community? Like, just because I was born generically like this doesn't mean I have to identify in those sectors. So, yeah, you know, because in your mind, like, well, you're trans because you're, you want to be more of a masculine female versus being a feminine female, so it must be trans. Or, well, because you have your male genitalia organ, because of your genetics so aren't that mean you're being trans because sex and gender is two different demographics so that's why i speak on those viewpoints as a movement and as an expression just for me to let you guys know it's no no more of like those viewpoints like it's a dramatic scenario because there's no reason for drama that's just me speaking on those viewpoints there's no offense towards you you can be whoever you want to be it doesn't hurt me but I'm going to still do my job of what I need to speak about. Because where people don't find the fine print, I don't mind. I don't care about the religious movement of how they will reveal about genders and sexuality because I'm spiritual. I have a spiritual birthright and I have a spiritual understanding that if you love who you love, love who you love and express that love for the person you love. However, it's the viewpoint where the tranny chasers for men and they chase some straight men or men, you know, they chase tranny's viewpoint because of the sexual chemistry viewpoints because it's about that. Because I am a porn star, so I know how all those stigmatizations go. Because, you know, it's like, oh, like, you're trying to be a good genitalia worshiper or you're trying to be able to serve this community. It's not like that. It's all about the freedom of expression towards one's own sexuality. So it's just the openness of willingness to disgrace, to disclose your own sexual preference in your own right mind without people being biased and hateful towards those types of idealistic formations. So that's all, you guys. But yeah, you know, but other than that, like, in the LGBTIA community, like, you remember, they're still learning and they're still growing, of course. I like the color of the flag, yes, of the rainbow, yeah, you know, because it's like, it's a peaceful sign, you know, it's you being, like, choosing yourself of your own umbrella. However, it's just certain spots where I don't feel like I have to affiliate myself with those same spots to let people know that I'm supporting this community when I do all my, what I do on a regular basis for myself as a woman empowerment coach and everything else as such so i don't just say that oh well you know sexuality so yes i know sexuality yes everybody has a general sexuality of expression a preference and appearance of who they're trying to look for and attract not everybody is close-minded onto one person like oh how i am a female born with a male genitalia at birth but so and so he likes cisgender I'm cisgender, however, I have a birth defect of genitalia disorder, of sexual development disorder, not anything else on that, because I speak on it on my behalf of me. I don't speak on it for every intersex person. I speak on it for the sense of my own understanding of where I am in life. 
And I know sometimes it may, like with these words, it might hurt people's feelings, but it's not supposed to because obviously it wasn't demographic to hurt your feelings. It's just me just being truthful and getting the understanding of this knowledge behind this science that no, I just, it's a peaceful mindset of a peaceful view of my life for me. I feel like I supported a lot in the LGBTI community, but I feel like overall for myself and understanding my truth, I support in a bigger term me delivering my truth of formation and breaking down those movements, breaking down those movements to actually express those types of things that actually help govern your day-to-day -day life as a spiritual life coach. So yeah, you know, but yeah, you guys, but with that being said, you know, it's just, yeah, you know, I just... I just wanted to talk about it because I don't want people to feel like, oh, you're like, are you making the movement for LGBTIA? Like, I want everybody to find the person that they should find in life because there's no reason in a short life that someone else was looking for this person and they was not able to find the person they were looking for in the cisgender category. So yes, that's what I do as a therapist standing viewpoint. Cause it's like it's romantic i'm not gonna get in long i'm not gonna get involved in someone else's romantic life from finding happiness because why would i want that for my own happiness would i want someone being in my romantic life trying to stop my happiness romantically just because they had a crush on me no so it's the same vice versa for that also i wouldn't because you know in a living in a male's world you know with my condition of sexual development disorder you know, men try to play part on those types of viewpoints already from me being in my masculine ways and me being in my feminine ways. You know, it's just, in my understanding, it's just overall happiness. That's all what everybody's agendas in life are. It's just the overall feeling of happiness for themselves. But they're also legal requirements of your happiness also. Meaning, remember who you were at birth so you can remember who you will be at all times at birth. Because... Yes, gender dysphoria is one thing. You have gender dysphoria. But it's another thing if you're trying to think that once you have a surgery, gender dysphoria just disclosed. That's not how gender dysphoria goes. It's always you trying to build yourself more into the feminine or masculine viewpoints that you see yourself as. Like as me being a masculine female, like no, I don't I don't work out on my upper arms. These are my natural strengths. You know, because this is my, this is me. This is all me naturally. You know, this is me naturally. You know, so I don't work out to, like, build on those types of, like, oh, you're trying to be a bodybuilder now. I'm like, no. I work out for leg movements, viewpoints, because I feel like in cardio and being a cardio person, I feel like I want to be known for my extreme cardio on my hips and my thighs and my you know, legs and everything else, because I feel like that's the overall viewpoint that governs me as a fitness trainer, so I could feel more loving in my own, like, I love myself already, don't get me wrong, I love myself conditionally, I love myself so much, but it's just, you know, it, you know what I mean, you guys, you know what I mean, it's just that one viewpoint that people want to be biased and judgmental based on those types of viewpoints, because if you love yourself so much, why are you not being your authentic self? You're like being a masculine viewpoint and then being feminine. Well, you have to understand there's a time in someone's life that makes them change that helps them become more of who they're going to be. Like I went through a lot of abuse growing up. So as an adult woman, I already know all of the scenarios where I found my happiness I've done all the hard work to prove my happiness towards myself and I continuously do the work to make myself happiness moments happen for me. So of course, there's nothing else in my mindset that's conflicting that viewpoint. So you know, like or how when men only get what they can attract, yeah, I'm not gonna pause my life for a man on some other level to be able to find me just so he can have his one-on-one -on -one way of with me. Cause, you know, it, it's acceptance of sex for the person you want to have sex with. Because as a sex therapist, I'm just letting you guys know, healthy sex is better than someone trying to take advantage of you. So that's what I want you guys to know the most about sexuality. But it's just, no, like, yeah, I know. It shouldn't be like, oh, you don't know your gender. Or, no, you don't know this. Or you don't know this. It doesn't matter what your gender spectrum is. It matters how you feel totally for yourself. That's all my gender as an intersex woman disclosed. 
I'm happy with myself. I love myself. However, I don't want to feel like I have to fit the norms for someone else's viewpoints to love myself unconditionally and do the same things that everybody else do. I don't do that. I take my part in working and as a legal coach, I support the support part of an aid in the community. But I don't go into like, you know, like the whole like, you know, pride parade only because there's a lot of bias and judgmental viewpoints with that. And I don't feel like as a person that I have to put myself in like, uh, like, you know, like a an outfit just so that people know that this is who I am and I want to be who I want to be because that's all that judgmental bias. I don't want judgments and I don't want biased viewpoints. So that's why I just disclose as I disclose. I support the community, but I don't support the community and like the whole overall viewpoints that I have to constantly do as an advocator in that community. I don't do that. That's not what I do. I don't have to live my life in that viewpoints. I set my force on that everybody in Equal Opportunity Act of Law, everybody has the same, and these have the same career goals, women and men, not just only one sex. So that's for that viewpoint, you know, because it's like, you know, there's a lot of judgmental viewpoints in employment for LGBT communities, you know, like some people feel like it's a disgrace. Some people feel like it's all these hiccups in one where it's like a lot of judgments, where it's just like, who cares if someone wants to be happy in the loving themselves journey? Who cares? It's like we're all here for a short period of time. We all go to a job and we all work for the reason why we work. We work to be able to survive for our families. We don't work for you to judge us and go into the sceneries of, oh, what's your gender? What's this? What's that? Like, no, nobody works in life to view those types of type of document viewpoints of people's perspectives. You know, it's like even being a sex therapist and a counselor, I don't go into words to have everybody's bias and judgmental viewpoints. You know, and as a business coach, I still don't want to hear someone's bias, judgment, viewpoints. So that's all I wanted you guys to know. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. Hit the like button, and I'll see you guys in the next video.